Okay. Let's keep this slide up here because this kind of allows me to draw or write less. So. You know, as Rob talked about, uh, this is how a cluster is typically laid out. These are standard off-the-shelf x86 hardware in our labs. These are uh, super micro boxes, but we have deployed across at least three or four different server vendors. So obviously hardware is not the issue. Um, you have a compute here, obviously, and this can be, like Robert mentioned, hypervisor agnostic. So let's assume, for sake of simplicity, this is a VMware environment. Right? Now, the one thing that we did mention is that there's only one fundamental abstraction that we export out from the underlying cluster. Right? That's what we call a virtual disk. Right? And typically, when you provision a virtual disk, there is certain policies you associate with it. Right? So let's assume that someone wants to put to run a database in a VM, and we are providing storage for them, right? So what would you typically do? Let's say you want to create a virtual disk, you give it a name, VI, and you will see all this in the demo uh, as to how that is done. And now you want to associate a bunch of policies with it, right? So you would say, I want a virtual disk of size one terabyte, and you would say, I want to replicate it three ways. Now you want your database to be implicitly DR certified. So you would say I want it replicated with a uh, what we call a data center aware replication policy. Right? The moment you do this, the system also gives you the freedom to choose which data centers you want it replicated into. Right? And this one physical cluster can span multiple geographies. Right? So you could say I want it replicated across data centers A, B, and C. And some of the other policies that you can, you can attach to this virtual disk is you could say, I want dedicated consistent performance, so pin my virtual disk to SSDs, right? So you could say, this is basically a checkbox in the management UI. You'll see that shortly. Now, you, if you know or if you understand your data, if your data lends itself to compression really well, then you can say, I want compression turned on. And if you feel that your data also lends itself to deduplication, you can turn that on too. Now, once you carve this virtual disk, it's an entry into our metadata system. So over here, there is a logical separation between data and metadata, and both of them can scale independent of each other. Right? So there are no single points of failure or bottlenecks anywhere in the platform. Right? So once you do expand a bit on the metadata reference there. Yeah, give me one second, and I will do that. Um, so when you create this virtual disk, that is an entry into our metadata system, right? So on every node over here, there are two processes that are running. One manages the data, and the other manages the metadata, right? The metadata is both partitioned and replicated. So. <coughs> And the metadata for us is the holy grail. It's the source of truth in, in the entire system, right? Now, once you do this, you can decide whether you want to present this virtual disk to a storage proxy, either as a block device or as an NFS mount point, right? You do that, and that's it. You're good to go. Your applications can start consuming this virtual disk. And the moment any database starts putting data on this virtual disk, it's implicitly DR. And the system is designed to kind of adhere to all these policies. Is that clear so far? Any questions? Cool. Now, when we say that a virtual disk is of a terabyte and it's replicated three ways, we do not mean that there is one, one terabyte spread across three different machines. It doesn't mean there's one terabyte here, one terabyte here, and one terabyte here. What we basically do is, the unit of partition is slightly more granular, so we slice it up and we throw it across the entire cluster. And those slices we internally call containers and they get distributed entire, into the entire cluster, right? And they get replicated three ways. So technically, they could get chunked into 30 pieces each and then those 30 pieces would be replicated to three different. You're right. Is that correct? You're correct. I mean, it's, in this case, it will be more than 30, but you get the idea. 
Now, the point that Rob was trying to make about you know, the <coughs> flexibility in the platform and the way we believe that the platform lends itself to different applications is you can turn off or on these policies based on your understanding of the workload for the virtual disks that you start creating. Right? You could have a different application right, for which you may carve out another virtual disk, VJ, and you may completely reshuffle these properties. Right, because they need completely different set of properties. You could say, I want a virtual disk which is of size 100 gigs, replicated three ways, with a rack aware policy, which means that all your copies will be within the confines of a single data center, but each of those pieces will be put on a distinct rack within the data center. Right? And you could also say that, you know, maybe for this one, I don't really care about performance. So instead of pinning it to flash, I'll pin it to hard disk drives. And uh, maybe it lends itself well to compression, but not to deduplication. So I wouldn't have dedupe turned on. Now, for example, when would I want to do that? If you generate any kind of a cryptographic workload, you cannot dedupe it. Right? It's, it's practically impossible. Right? In that case, going through the pains of, of uh, suffering whatever overhead deduplication will bring, you can completely eradicate. Does that make sense? So through this platform, you can create about millions of virtual disks and just export them out. Right? You can see that all when we do the demo. Right? And creating these storage assets of these virtual disks are so simple that you can practically create them from within your iPhone. And we'll show that too in the demo today. Now, apart from these capabilities, the metadata system is so robust that we track almost anything and everything that happens in the system, right? including every write that came in, where it got replicated into, if there were failures in the replication, we track where it failed, where it did not fail, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get complete insight into what's happening within the system. And all those are also exposed via APIs that if one wants to program against and pull that information out, one could do so. And is that, is that, um, is your metadata repository um, um, redundant? Yes, it's partitioned and replicated. And can you replicate that information to the cloud? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on how the low-level stuff works? Because what I can do is I can, we can start with the demo and I can take the questions at that point as and when you see things working. Yeah, let's go to the demo. Make sense? Cool. Yep. So must I understand that's Hedvig takes out a bit uh, the complexity of configuring your uh, Cassandra cluster. Uh, what cluster? Well, the complete uh, Cassandra setup, I mean, the distribution of the nodes and uh, so on and so forth. No, so Cassandra, I would think of it as just another application running on top of us. So the way you would run it is... Just the other way around, in fact. 